Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and here are all the books that I read last month in July. I ended up reading 16 books last month, so let's talk about them. The first book that I finished in July is Haven by Claire Kent. This is the first book in her Kindled series and I've heard amazing things about this series from my good friend Rachel from Rachel Reads and Sings. It's a like post-apocalyptic romance series and if you don't know me I love post-apocalyptic romances like I love them um, whether it be contemporary paranormal whatever the case may be I love post-apocalyptic romances so I knew I had to read the series and I've already read a few books by Claire Kent so I knew I'd already like her writing so I feel like this was like a recipe for a great time these are short shorter books like this one was only like 170 pages and basically this series is post-apocalyptic right so like the world is kind of like ended I think there was a sickness that broke out I can't remember off the top of my head honestly but before the apocalypse happened the heroine lived on a ranch with her family and she is now living with the farmhand who, like who the family hired the ha family hired this older like farmhand older than her farmhand and since the apocalypse hit both her parents have passed and she now runs this ranch with this guy who was the farmhand his name is jackson and they actually have their own like camp now on this ranch with a bunch of other like survivors who want to be with them. Anyway, this is the romance between our heroine and Jackson and there is an age difference between the two. There is an age gap um, and Jackson is very gruff and surly and I think in this one we got a little bit of a glimpse or a hint into some of the possible um, couples from the other books in the series in the future so I'm really excited. I thought this was like a great little toe dip into this post-apocalyptic romance series. Tropes, you have Age Gap, Grumpy Hero, it's on Kindle Unlimited, it's post-apocalyptic, and it is a novella. Then I read The Orc and Her Bride by Lila Gwen. This is the first book in the Sapphic Orcs of Torden series. I listened to this on Libby. I saw a sapphic and then orc romance and I was like yeah. Let, let, let me read it, please. So basically, <laughs> this is the very reluctant arranged marriage between a elf princess and an orc princess. <laughs> or is she a queen? I can't remember, she's royalty though, okay? Anyway, these two get in an arranged marriage and the orc like knows that she's gonna get married to this woman, knows about it, has been writing her, I think wrote her like a letter, hoping that her like fiance is comfortable with everything and that she's excited to meet her. But then the elf princess, who's like a spoiled little brat, comes to the orc kingdom not knowing where she is. Like her family kind of like tricks her into this situation and she shows up in this orc kingdom and is like, what am I doing here? And her family tells her, oh, you're gonna marry this princess. And she's like, oh, what? Um, and she is pissed and her family kind of like ditches her there and sails across the sea, leaving her there. <laughs> she's like, what is going on? She had no idea about this alliance. And so she decides that she's gonna be like the worst like horrible person possible to try and get this orc princess to reject her so she like just throws temper tantrums all day long so she was not my favorite because i didn't love that but like it was her survival technique so like props to her uh, but the shining star in this book was ruga who was the orc princess i freaking love her her patience is astounding she has no bounds has no bounds with her patience levels and she was just so kind and caring her people love her and um she was patient but then she also has this like vulnerable side to her that i couldn't help but love because she thinks that because the elf heroine so i cannot remember her name off the top of my head right now the elf heroine um doesn't want to be with her so she thinks that something is like wrong with her when they're could not be farther than the truth. She's like everything. So I love this one. If you're like a hot, savage monster read, I definitely recommend this one. This one is an arranged marriage. It's a cozy romance to me. It has like cozy vibes. Um, it has elves. It's a fantasy romance. It's LGBTQ+. It's a monster romance. It has orcs. It's royalty. And it is sapphic. Then <laughs> we have the start to a few books that you will see later on in this video. Um, I have completed the Devil's Night series last month. So um, I picked up Kill Switch next in the docket. And this was the one that I was looking forward to the most out of all of the books in the 
Devil's Night series. If you don't know, the Devil's Night series is a dark romance series by Penn Douglas. And that's all I can really say. It's new adult, dark elements, characters who hate each other, getting together. Um, so that's all I really can say. This one is about Winter and Damon. And Winter is blind. And so I obviously wanted to read about a character with disability representation knowing me. And it's kind of like her second chance romance with Damon, who is, according to like book number one and book number two, like the most dangerous guy in this friend group out of all of them. And I'm like, what is going to happen? So this one did not disappoint. It was really good. It is my favorite in the series, for sure. I've read all the books. It's my favorite in the series. This one has a blind character. It's a bully romance, has a damaged hero, a dancer. The heroine is a dancer. Um, it's a dark romance. I hate everyone in the world but you trope. It has a revenge plot line. Um, it has disability representation and it is a second chance romance. Following that, I read the novella, which is book number 3.5 in the Devil's Night series, which is Conclave. This is just a short little novella that takes place on this like boat yacht thing after book number three. And that's all I can really say. Like there was nothing really to it. I literally, I could have done without it, honestly. Um, but that's just me. <laughs> then I have All Downhill With You by Julie Olivia. This is the first book in her Honeywood series. Honeywood is an amusement park. Um, it kind of reminded me of the, um, what's that? The bears, the the ba the the country bears, like the country bears, the something country bears. <laughs> I can't remember, but this series kind of reminds me of that, where like there's like this uh, group of bears, a family of bears or whatever. Like that's the whole theme of the theme park is bears and honey and stuff like that. Kind of like Winnie the Pooh too, maybe. Like like inspired, not Winnie the Pooh actually in here, because that would not be good, because copyright issues. But like inspired by that. Anyway, this book starts out with us meeting our heroine who is the survivor of a roller coaster accident and it's actually very rare to get injured from a roller coaster and it's doubly as rare to get injured twice and that's what happened to her so she thinks she has like the most horrible luck in the entire world and she actually works in the park, has been working in the park ever since she was a teenager. She loves this amusement park so much. It means everything to her. And she is out to sue the builder, the the architect of the roller coaster because she needs a knee replacement because it injured her so bad, like some shrapnel fell on her. She needs a knee replacement and it costs thousands, thousands of dollars. And she needs, she has to sue him basically because she needs some money. She doesn't have the money. Um, and she is in a lot of chronic pain because of it. She can't even run anymore. Running is one of her favorite things ever. She can't even run anymore because her leg hurts so bad. In the midst of this lawsuit and everything, the creator of the roller coaster is actually coming to the park to figure out what is wrong with it and build a different new roller coaster for the amusement park. These two characters obviously don't get off on the right foot because she got injured from the roller coaster he created and he believes that she is just out to sue him for money reasons and wants as much money as possible from him. But that couldn't be further than the truth. The heroine just, just, just doesn't want to be in pain anymore. She wants her life back that she loves. So they get off at a rocky start but the two of them start to fall for each other and the hero really loves seeing the passion the heroine has for this park and like just love seeing her passion in general honestly so i loved that because he's like this big grumpy gruff boss man like businessman and then he gets to see the heroine just shine bright and he's like what 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 stuff is she taking because i'll i'll take some so this one takes place in an amusement park it has chronic pain representation it's enemies to lovers um it's forbidden and it's grumpy sunshine and it is a workplace romance i am looking forward to reading the rest of the books in this series I think all of them take place like at this fun little amusement park. Then I picked up Agnar's Teacher by Jennifer Wood. This is the first book in her Abandoned on Niflheim. I can't say this. Y'all, alien words. <laughs> Nif Niflheim. No, it's Niflheim. That's what it was. Sorry, I listened to this book that that triggered something. <laughs> Niflheim. So basically the heroine gets abducted by aliens and like evil aliens and then she gets saved by these orc aliens. Like gets transported to this planet where there are orcs living there and she's kind of like accepted her fate that she is like been transported to this planet. It's like, what am I gonna do? Let me go take a walk to clear my head. And um, Agnar is one of the orcs, a part of the um, tribe that found her. And 
he's chopping down a tree to get out some frustrations and literally chopped down the tree on top of our heroin and that might spark like a mating frenzy bond thing so this one was cute it was short it's not my favorite monster romance um but i would read more in the series because it was funny i did love the discussion of anxiety in here the heroine has anxiety and she's like what am i gonna do they didn't abduct me with my anxiety medication like whoa, what is gonna happen so um it's it was really cool to see like even this um, alien or species is like, yeah, no, we prioritize mental health. There is this certain plant that you have to find in our lands that is far away in order to like grind it up and like that helps with anxiety. So these two actually kind of like go on a trek to like find that plant. This So this one has anxiety wrap. It's cute but hot. It has faded mates. It is a monster romance and has the never been kissed trope. The hero has never been kissed before. And obviously it has orcs. Continuing on the alien romance trek, I read Alien Protector Stars by Melissa Emerald. This is the second book in her Faded Mates of the Winged Barbarian series. This series does kind of remind me of Ice Planet Barbarians and like the vibe, I guess, because you do have women who have been abducted from Earth and they get um, taken by some evil guys and then the plane crashes or the spaceship crashes on this planet where they're like there are no women these um, alien winged men have never seen a woman in their whole life and it's about all of them finding mates so this is one of the women we met in book number one her romance and she may or may not be like pregnant like already and um, she finds out she's faded mates to this very grumpy alien dude and it's like not gonna happen so this whole time like this alien guy is kind of like groveling to get this woman but she has a secret obviously so it's kind of hard for her to keep Hoped for this one alien romance faded mates not the hero's baby and uh the like pregnancy trope then i picked up his tesoro by amelia rossi i've been wanting to read this one for a while a lot of people a lot of people have actually dm'd me about this book i've never been like dm'd or commented a book so much in my life <laughs> I gotta say. Um, so this is a mafia romance with disability representation. The heroine has a medical condition that is very similar to my own. Um, so she has EDS or Ehler Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which is like a sister condition to mine. Anyway, so the heroine is a wheelchair user. I do know of people who have EDS who do use a wheelchair to help them. Even though they are physically able to walk, it is very painful for them to walk. So the heroine and the hero meet because it's an arranged marriage between mafia families right um they meet when he's at the end of the aisle on their wedding day and she is at the end of the aisle in her wheelchair and she's rolling herself down the aisle she also uses a walker which <laughs> have never seen that before so i i loved that part because i use a walker on and off um i use it when i'm flaring really bad i was like oh my gosh a girly who also uses a walker i love you <laughs> Um, so yeah, this one was good. I really liked like the mafia aspects in here. I kind of wish we got a little bit more development because I felt like the romance happened a little too fast for my liking. But I also think that's like a me thing because I just wanted more from them because I really liked them a lot. I wanted more from them. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, he is a very grump, like dangerous mafia man um, and like will kill anyone that touches his woman. Tropes for this one, age gap, arranged marriage, the heroine is a baker, so baking, uh, books with pets, the hero gets the heroine a service dog, brooding hero, chronic pain representation, cover lust, this cover is stunning to me, okay? Uh, forced proximity, grumpy sunshine, I hate everyone in the world but you, it's on Kindle Unlimited, it's a mafia romance, um, there's a marriage alliance, uh, married couple romance, the use of mobile Ability aids, uh, has disability representation, and has the toucher and die trope, which I love. To continue on with the Devil's Night series, I ended up picking up Nightfall, which is book number four, which was a solid book. I really did like this one. I can't really talk about the series because even though they, each book is about a different couple, like they definitely build off of each other if that makes sense like you gotta read book number one like you'd be so lost if you read book number four basically this is like a second chance romance between two characters and the setting that they are in is so interesting to me it was like it was wild that's all i can really say so it's a dark new adult romance last book in the series 
thoroughly enjoy my time with it. Next is The Outlaw and the Lady by Lorraine Heath. I wanted to pick up books with disability representation throughout the month of July because it was Disability Pride Month, um, so I made sure to prioritize those books. So this one's been on my TBR for a while. It's a historical romance where um, the heroine is visually impaired. She's blind. And this one's a Western. The hero is actually like this uh, bank robber, but he only specifically robs the money from a specific person in the bank <laughs> because he like wronged him, okay? And one night when he's robbing <laughs> his bank, someone kind of like bumps into him in the process of him escaping the bank. He's like, crap, someone saw me. I'm gonna have to take them with me. So he basically puts a bag over the woman's head who was just taking a walk down this alley and kidnaps her with his men. Like, oh, where are you gonna take this woman? Because she saw me. It isn't until like maybe a day or two later that he realizes she can't even freaking see. So he kidnapped her for no reason. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's about the two of them falling in love. Um, the heroine's family is like set out to find her. So there are a bunch of people tracking them down. But yeah, it's kind of insta lovey to me, but it was actually really sweet. This one has a blind character, hidden identity. It's a historical romance. There's kidnapping. Um, there's disability representation. You have a virgin hero. Okay. And it is a Western. Then the last book to talk about in the Devil's Night series is the novella number 4.5, which is Fire Night, um, which was really interesting. Now tell me, Penelope Douglas girlies, Penelope Douglas fans out there, um, is there a second gen series yet? Like, huh, hello? Like this novella makes me want to read the second gen series. Like I can see couples possibly happening for second generation. So this little novella takes place like years after the last book. Um, and it's kind of like a second gen story, but the, they're kids. Like their kids are, are kids, they're not adult. Like their romance is not, like romances are not happening. But something happens to one of the couple's kid in this book. It was a fun little read. I actually really enjoyed this and getting so many different point of views in this one. So let me know though, all my Penn Douglas fans, like is there already a second gen series? Cause I don't know. I maybe need to do some research cause I haven't yet, but yeah. Then I wanted to pick up a novella just to cleanse the palette. I found Wanted by the Champion by Alison Archer. This is a figure skating romance. This one kind of reminded me of Luke Off with Love a little bit. I didn't personally love Luke Off with Love. Um, so if you want like a novella version of that, I recommend this one. Um, so these two characters are figure skating partners. They don't start out as figure skating partners. It starts out with our hero not having a figure skating partner because his partner they've had for years had decided to um, retire and have a family. So he's like, well, great, I gotta find a new partner. So his team basically sends him a bunch of videos of prospective partners he could have. He finds one of the girls that he watches like immediately is hooked onto her like finds her so intriguing is basically obsessed with her from the get-go that's our heroine she is like 10 years younger than him i want to say the tension that the two of them have just lead to like some fantastic hot figure skating so yeah it's a short little novella i had i had fun reading it tropes for this one it's age gap there is dirty talk this man has a mouth on him um figure skating insta love it's unkind unlimited it's a novella and it is a sports romance then i picked up reject me by kel carpenter and aurelia jane i picked this one up because i was wanting like a campy wattpad-esque like piano romance and that is what i got like this is this is that <laughs> so if you're wanting that this is that but i think halfway through it i lost my um urge to read that but i wanted to finish it still um it's basically a paranormal romance where the heroine is a wolf shifter like in a wolf shifter pack but she's not able to shift into a wolf and when she was a kid a witch was able to like pull the wolf out of her and so now she has like her wolf form as like a companion in real life so like she doesn't shift into the wolf the wolf is like her companion anyway this book starts out with her figuring out that her fated mate is this werewolf guy who has been her bully all throughout childhood um which i would have found that romance more intriguing than the romance actually happened i always prefer with a rejected mate story to have like the hero grovel and him actually be like her fated mate i'm not that big of a fan of fated mate rejection romances where like she just gets with someone else other than her fate of mate. I, I don't love that. I feel like I want, I want the fate of mate part to happen with the fate of mate. And then you get rejected and then you have to grovel your butt off to get her back. Like, I love those. Um, so she finds out that her childhood bully um, is her fate of mate. And um, she just wants him to reject her. And then she pretends to have a second chance 
mating bond with a vampire ruler who's our hero so that's the romance in here it was a good read okay it was good i just like halfway through the book i lost my want to read this type of book you know what i mean tropes for this one it is a paranormal romance and it is wattpad-esque for sure <laughs> next time i reread i decided to reread debbie's distraction by Ruby dixon probably my favorite book in the ice home series um this one is the romance between debbie and nadek nadek is a character in this tribe who is feeling very down about himself um he lost his leg a few years ago and he is sick and tired of his tribe mate tribes mates sorry having to carry him around everywhere um so he goes up to debbie who is very smart he knows that she's very smart it's like hey can you help me basically build a prosthetic leg and she's like oh my gosh yeah i can definitely help you with that um so the two of them kind of work together to try and build this prosthetic leg and help him become stronger and able to stand like it's it's really good and these two fall in love like throughout it it's so fun like watching these two fall for each other because they're both like innocent characters but then learning each other's bodies like it was so hot it was so hot next is duke of depravity by scarlett scott this is her first book in the sins of scoundrel series this isn't my favorite series by scarlett scott i've only read book number one though i do need to continue i love scarlett scott's writing um, but i prefer her other books that are sitting i'm pointing down there because they're sitting down there for me um but i listened to this one on libby basically our heroine's dad is being blackmailed um and so she is asked by this very high powerful earl or something to become a spy for him in this duke's household so this duke needs a governess for his two young sisters and they keep like throwing out all the governesses because they can't handle these rowdy girls so the heroine comes in um but she has a secret she obviously is going to be a spy instead <laughs> um and then they fall for each other she ends up falling for the man she's supposed to be spying on which she should not be doing so she's trying to keep him at a distance but she cannot help herself she ends up falling for this man he's very gruff and grumpy and very mean at first but he totally softens for our heroine because he's a broody guy like he he's been through a lot he's a tortured man he's been through a lot he's been to war and has lost friends in war and got and like saw his friends die like he's been through a lot so i don't blame him for being grumpy tropes for this one you have governess hidden identity it's a historical romance and there is a spy in here and the last book that i ended up reading in july is business casual by vk borson which was an anticipated read for me for this year this is book number four in her love light series which is a whole series that takes place in this small town specifically a part of this farm called love light farms and this is the romance between nova and charlie and it's like grumpy sunshine the heroine is the grump and the hero is the sunshine the heroine's a tattoo artist these two have been friends for a while um and they're kind of just like kind of like in the same friend group i guess they decide to have a one night stand together because they just like they they need they need to do that okay they they need it they're like oh my gosh come home with me please um and then it turns into more they cannot help themselves they need more than just one night and that turns into a snowball effect of them like falling for each other normally i don't love one night stand to more romances but this one was really good and i loved the ending there was no like third act breakup conflict which i also absolutely love i just really enjoyed both these characters charlie was so sweet and like such golden retriever energy which i love i love that in a man his mouth like dirty talk like dirty talk this man talks like like mm -mm. he had me squirming i could <laughs> i could not focus like I had to pause that for a few times. This one was a solid book. I loved it. My favorite's still probably book number three, but this one is like maybe second place, honestly. And this one also has a representation for chronic migraines. The heroine gets chronic migraines, which loved that representation. Tropes for this one, cinnamon roll hero, dirty talking, <laughs> grumpy sunshine, one night stand to more, there's a caretaking scene, golden retriever energy, opposites attract, small town romance, and you have a tattoo artist. I really enjoyed this one. It was a great book to end the month for sure. Anyways, there you have it. Those are all the books that I read last month in July. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting anything else, you can leave me a cat emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.